Good morning. Merry Christmas 2021. This is going to be a strange Christmas for me and probably for many of you as well. We've got members of the extended family that are sick, other members that were recently sick, other members that can't afford to be sick. So we are scattered to the four winds. It's going to be a weird one. But it's okay because Christmas ain't about family anyway. I mean, Christmas, we all want to spend Christmas with our family. Christmas is very important to many people, people that understand the deeper things in life. Christmas is important to us, and we want to spend it with our family. But Christmas is about something much, much more. It is about God. It is about Jesus. It is about sacrifice, salvation, love. Christmas celebrates the birth of the Son of God Almighty. God loves man so much, he allowed his Son to be one of us. He planted his seed in the Virgin who gave birth to a Son. Her Son is completely God and completely man. Jesus Christ, he lived a perfect sinless life, and then he allowed mankind to murder him on the cross because he knew that he could conquer death and pain and sin for us. This is what Christmas is all about. Christmas celebrates his birth, his virgin birth for mankind. Easter celebrates his death, burial, and resurrection after we all participated in murdering him. What kind of God would become one with his creation? What kind of God would sacrifice his perfect, immaculate, obedient, and amazing son for a bunch of ingrates, people who reject him and rebel against him and don't follow his ways? And some of them ignore and claim he doesn't even exist. Others shake their fist and blame him for all their own problems and the problems of mankind. What kind of God would expose himself to our scorn in that way? An amazing one. One that's strong enough to overlook. One that's strong enough to be scorned and still love. We get a glimpse of this in parenthood. Now, some of you may have had bad parents, but I had great parents, and many of you as well. Parents who love you no matter what you do. They might be a little disappointed. They might even discipline you, but they love you no matter what. My mother and dad are perfect examples of this loving and loving and loving, even when I'm a schmuck. This shows us the mind of God. That kind of love comes from God. If you hate God and love your parents, you don't get it. That's called ignorance. All love, perfect love in this world, is just a manifestation of what God has taught us, what God has showed us, and the capacity that God gave us. This is what Christmas is all about. Love that loves when it is rejected. Love that loves when it's scorned. This is what Christmas is all about. We can post up our silly Santas and our gift givings and all this. There's nothing wrong with that. But it would be a tragedy to miss the reason for the season, Jesus Christ, salvation. Scripture teaches that everyone who surrenders to him, to Jesus Christ, is the God of the universe because God elevate him up above every name, every power and authority. God has placed all things under Jesus Christ. He has decided that because of the obedience and sacrifice of his son, that no one will come to him without surrender to Jesus. You think you worship God and you reject Jesus? Good stinking luck. You're going to stand there in the judgment and tell God Almighty that you reject his son who died for them? For you, I don't think so. Use your head. 
find out the facts. It's easy to find, especially in America. The world is sprinkled with Bibles, sprinkled with God's word. God's word is proclaimed from the rooftops by the righteous and by the unrighteous. But because he gave his word to us, it is available. We can see it. We have to surrender it to it. Scripture teaches everyone who surrenders to Jesus will be saved. What we have to do is ask forgiveness for our sin. Because because of our sin, we will be eternally separated from God after we die. And yet, if we ask Jesus to cover us with his blood, to pay for our sins from his death, he promises to do that. If we don't ask, he won't. He did it for us, but he won't impose his gift on us. We have to accept it. If you pray to receive Jesus Christ, to accept his death and blood and burial and resurrection, to ask him to pay for your sin and promise to worship him alone. Scripture teaches he will send his Holy Spirit to live inside of you. You can't worship Jesus and also cling to other gods. You can't worship anyone else. Not Mary, not Buddha, not any other nonsensical, mythical feature, figure. There's only one God, Jesus Christ. And God has determined that all have to surrender to him alone. If you surrender to Jesus Christ and accept his death, death, burial, and resurrection, Scripture teaches he'll spend his, send his spirit to live inside of you. The spirit is your guarantee. It's like a wedding ring that don't come off. He's your guarantee you will live forever with God in heaven after you die. He is also, the Holy Spirit is the one who teaches us God's word. We have God's written word in the Bible. And yet, uh, mankind, like we do everything else, we misinterpret nearly everything. All of our science is tainted with our own reasoning. All of religion is tainted with our own reasoning. And since we can't get away from the tainting of our own reasoning on the words of God Almighty, we need to make sure we start with the source of truth, the Bible. So even if we start to deviate, at least we're starting with the truth. There are many things in Scripture that are quite easy to understand. There are other things that are harder to understand. But there is one who would taint our ability to understand anything. And the Holy Spirit guards against that. And when we read scripture with an open heart, the Holy Spirit inside of us who indwells us shows us the truth of the message. You don't have to believe me because God speaks for himself. He speaks through scripture. He proclaims uh, from the mouth of man. And he is actually proclaiming through me at this moment. And yet the Holy Spirit will confirm the truth of this message if you actually are open to truth. If you are unsure, I recommend you pray this prayer. Asking God to reveal the truth to you. Now, when you do this, you can't do this with a closed heart. Like, yeah, show me because I want to evaluate it. Because if you're like that, you may not. But if you ask God to reveal himself to you with a heart full of surrender, a heart that's ready to surrender if you find the truth. When God reveals himself to you, you need to make a decision to follow him or not. If you refuse to follow him, you may never see the truth again because there is one, our adversary, the devil, who would steal that truth away and you may never see it again. But if you surrender to that truth, when the Spirit opens your eyes and reveals the truth of this message, if you surrender to that truth and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then once the Holy Spirit fills you, you can no longer have that truth stolen away. You can still have bad ideas because you're going to be in a constant wrestling match between your own spirit who wants to decide everything and wants to evaluate everything and the spirit of God who has the true deciding ability for what is right and wrong. And you will continue to wrestle with this as Adam and Eve did. 
Ever since they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, mankind has wrestled with this. We continue to elevate our opinion about right and wrong over God's opinion of right and wrong. It really doesn't matter if it makes sense to you. What matters is if it makes sense to God. And mankind should find what is the word of God, what does it mean, and then rewrite our thinking so that that is what starts as making sense and everything is built on that. This is what Christmas is all about. Of course, it's focused on the birth part. The birth part. Jesus Christ, Son of God, becomes man. Everybody loves babies. We can all get excited about the idea of this baby in a manger who his parents had to go through this journey and they had the baby in a manger rather than a palace. What kind of God has his baby, his own son, put in a manger rather than a palace? Only one who recognizes and is trying to show us that there's something a lot more important than the status and the acclimate and the comfort that mankind perceives and pursues. A God who's showing us the way through humility, a surrender to God's will. This is what Jesus showed us. He surrendered himself to his Father's will. And because of that, God has elevated him above all, all authority, all creation, all mankind. And those who would seek and serve him and become a part of his family need to surrender their will to his will, which starts with the surrender to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's what Christmas is all about. So if you're with your family, great congratulations. And if you ain't, invite God Almighty to become a personal part of your Christmas. Enjoy.